Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now go through the major newspapers and see what uh, stories make the headlines this morning. But before that, we'll say good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Demola Akimbala, publisher of The Podium Media. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good, good morning. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll start this morning with stories from the Punch newspapers and see what uh, we can quickly find and share uh, with you. Uh, the big one there says, Governors cry out, demand action from Buhari as 21 more Nigerians are killed. Insecurity level now terrible, says uh, Senators. Bello laments uh, Boko Haram's occupation. Security situation very pathetic. Uh, Buhari should be told the truth, says Zulum. A national, emer uh, national Assembly demands emergency declaration, asks Buhari to seek foreign help. Ooh, all right. Reports rank Nigeria third worst country in the world. Buhari appeals to U.S. over insecurity, once AFRICOM in Nigeria. And also no fuel price increase without fixing refineries, says NLC. We can also see on the punch, Buhari standing aloof. His body language shows he is a Fulani president, says uh, Otom. Some Islamic leaders fi uh, finishing, or rather fishing in troubled water, provoking Christians, says Khan. And also Lagos to award fourth mainland bridge uh, contract in December. We can also see here Tinubu rubbishes report, uh, reported rift with Buhari after Villa closed door meeting. And also ICPC probes uncovered 2,000 tax evading firms recommends prosecution. Those are the ones that we will be sharing from the punch this morning. On the Nigerian Tribune, the headline reads, Autumn blasts Buhari, alleges president working for the Fulani. Suspected herdsmen attack IDP camp Q7. Above the headline, Afenifere is 70 today, begins low-key celebration. Buhari seeks U.S. support over security challenges once AFRICOM relocated to Africa. And on the State of the Nation stories here, Nigeria's situation calls for serious evaluation. That's according to Tinubu as he visits Buhari. Senate set to meet President. Lawan declares, we must take back this country. Zulam at Asuvilla says Nigeria needs support to succeed against insurgents. Reps ask Buhari to declare state of emergency. And below the headline on the Nigerian Tribune, stories read, police dismiss three cops over extortion of Lasso undergraduate. Confusion at AAU as two registrars assume duty. Kaduna insists no ransom will be paid to criminals. Oshimbajo here saying Nigeria difficult to police. Sell-offs of banking stocks deep market by 0.03%. An oil price rises as OPEC Plus sticks to plan to ease oil output cuts. Those are the stories on the Nigerian Tribune. The Guardian, uh, newspapers next. Uh, Buhari seeks help from U.S. over rising insecurity. A fair at 70, footprints of a colossus movement. And also, Benue State Governor Otom weeps as headers attack Benue IDP camp, kill seven. Stop inciting violence, Khan cautions Muslim leaders. And also $400 million UAE properties traced to top Nigerian politicians. We can also see here tough times ahead for states as federal government insists on a bailout repayment. And uh, finally, uh, this morning, 11 die in Ilori Road crash. Those are the ones on The Guardian. And uh, lastly, the Nation newspaper. The headline reads, Senator Reps challenge federal government on state of security. That's the Nation newspaper. Senators, Reps challenge federal government on state of security. Above the headline, how ex-governors, others, acquired 800 Dubai assets. President seeks urgent U.S. help on security. Commissioner says Lagos not phasing out yellow buses. Or your traders protest over rebuilding approval. Others say Ibezim takes sit as Imu North governor. Five die in Lagos Ibadan Road ac accident. And seven killed in Benue IDP camp. Those are the ones we're taking this morning. All right, Mr. Akimola, you're welcome once again. Uh, please uh, go ahead. Let's hear your thoughts. Thank you. Um, this must be a very depressing period for every uh, Nigerian conscience. Uh, I'm not sure it's really ever been this terrible. Um, 
we complain so much of insecurity under the previous administration, but I think what we're witnessing in Nigeria, especially since the beginning of this year, uh, the, has been outrageous, really. Um, remember about a month or two ago when the service chiefs were replaced, I did say that replacing the service chiefs would not necessarily solve our security problem. These are deep-seated and um, uh, entrenched problems that um, even a foreign support not immediately be solved. And we need to ask ourselves, why has Nigeria suddenly become ungovernable? Um, why has Nigeria suddenly become a hotbed of violence, of kidnapping? So many issues. One, you cannot rule out the activities of fifth colonists who are hard to politicize and destabilize this government for whatever reason. Two, acute incompetence on the part of the Commander-in-Chief, on the part of the various people in charge of our security. Three, low morale of the personnel, army, police. They are not committed, okay? They are not loyal, and you can't blame them. A nation that doesn't take care of its armed forces during the, during the time of peace should not expect much from them during the time of war. Nigeria is at war with itself now. Okay, so the same armed forces that you haven't invested time, resources, emotion on, they can't give you what you expect from them. So the long and short of it, the National Assembly should stop playing to the gallery. A serious National Assembly should be moving a motion for the impeachment of Mr. President because he has failed, really, in terms of security. No matter how much you spend on infrastructure, you need people to be alive to enjoy this infrastructure. Mm. So if this government has consistently failed in the area of security, as we are seeing, I do not know the justification that we, that the National Assembly has for keeping the president in office. Mm. They are going to have a closed door meeting with him. We don't need a closed door meeting. Have an open door, have a public hearing, and move a motion for the impeachment of Mr. President on the grounds of incompetence. That is the state where we are in now. Oh, well, I'm not sure if we don't uh, have to wait till 2020. I'm yes. not sure if uh, Senator Remy Tinubu would agree uh, with you on that one. And um, other members of the National Assembly who believe more in party loyalty uh, than in uh, yeah. uh, their responsibilities as uh, lawmakers. Um, let's bring you, you in on um, uh, the ranking, the Chandler government uh, report, you know, that puts Nigeria the third worst country, we're 102 out of 104. We're only better than Zimbabwe and Venezuela. What's, what's your take on that? It's not surprising. I mean, you and I, are, we, are, we are living witnesses to what's going on, okay? Security and safety of the people is the first thing. It's, it's the most critical index of development, okay? No matter how good your roads are, no matter how stable your power supply is, if people are not safe, then you don't have a country. So I'm not surprised. It, 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 it's sad, but that it's, it, 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 it's not something that we can truly say is surprising, okay? Um, it's, it's something that politicians want to debate as usual, but the reality on the ground suggests that Nigeria is not an IT place, okay? But what we do is our country. <laughs> it's, it's our country. The only thing we can do, as we've been doing, is to keep calling on government to do the right thing. Okay, this is not PDP APC, and I, 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 I wouldn't expect the PDP to make too much political capital out of what is going on now. We need all stakeholders to come together and fight this monster called banditry or whatever you call it. And state governments should stop rushing to Abuja or looking up to Abuja for solution. They are in charge of this state. They have huge security votes. What are they doing with it? Okay. As much as we say, okay, the president hasn't done well, what about the governors? Governor Otto, what have you been doing with your security votes? These are the questions the State House of Assembly should be asking the governors. Local government chairman, what have you been doing? So we need to start asking questions from our leaders at all levels, not just Buhari alone, governors, even National Assembly. So it, 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 it's, it, it, it's a situation that calls for a radical approach, okay? Because this, this is how we will be debating and be speaking big grammar. And the violence will continue, the kidnapping will continue, and nothing will happen.
It's sad, really. It's sad. It's quite depressing. Mr. Yeah. Kimbala, you actually just mentioned Governor Autumn yeah. and uh, asking what he's really doing yes. with security votes in the country. And he's also in the news. Yeah. I see him here on the front page of the Punch newspaper, below the headline, also on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Autumn blasting Buhari, alleging that the president works for the Fulani. He says, you know, on the front page of the Punch newspaper, Buhari standing aloof. His body language shows he is a Fulani president. Um, what are your comments on that? Let me ask a question. Is there any law that prevents Governor Autumn from beefing up security in Bender State? Is there any law that stops him from recruiting people into various vigilante um, groups so as to beef up security while waiting for the federal government to do its part? I ask again, what has Bender State done? Okay, I saw the video yesterday. Quite, quite, quite sad, quite pathetic. But hey, he should learn to lead by example. You want the president to wake up, you to wake up. And I think we've asked us to discuss out of here the last time he went to Abuja. And I said he has just gone there to waste his time. This is not a time for showmanship, this is time for action. <coughs> Which of the state government can we commend for adequate security? Okay? Which of them? I do not know. I want to see a state leading by example. So as much as we blame the president for being weak, we also need to blame the leaders at the grassroots. These states have commissioners. They have national assembly members. They have various amorphous security organizations. Yeah. So is it Buhari that would leave Abuja to come and secure Benin State? No, we know that he has his own role to play. Okay, he has his own blame. But let us also be fair. Everybody that is in a position of authority in Nigeria today should share from the blame of this insecurity. Not just worry a lot. The governors too. A local government. What are they doing with also, the FTM? Yes. Um, well, let's move on to away from security now. There's a, a report on the Guardian this morning that says four hundred million dollars uh UAE properties traced to Nigerian politicians. Uh, you quickly share your thoughts yeah. on that. Uh, well, I mean, it's something that we've always known. It's not just in the UAE. If you go to London, if you go to America, Nigerians own the choices, the choices properties in major capital cities of the world. And those are the proceeds of corruption. Okay? This is the money that should have been invested into the country to beef up security, to create employment. That is the money our leaders are taking abroad. Those are proceeds of corrupt practices. Okay, so it, it, it's, it, it's, it's nothing new to me. We've always known that they are siphoning our resources overseas, putting this money in Swiss banks. Nigerians own the best parties in Dubai. Okay, so this report is just confirming what we know. And it just shows that we are not there yet in terms of fighting corruption. I said it some weeks ago, a country whose laws contain so many loopholes, the so-called anti-corruption laws, they have so many loopholes to the extent that someone can actually escape two years, three years imprisonment for stealing so much money. Mm. So unwittingly, we are providing incentive for corruption. We are rewarding corruption. We are we, we, we are rewarding our leaders who are in, indulging in corrupt practices. So the laws need to be tightened, and the consequences need to be graver. We need to be stricter with our punishment. Just that, I mean, that's just the way to go. We need to look at those laws and and begin to stipulate death sentences if we need to. Okay, if we need to. Look at China. The things that our leaders cannot do in other countries, they do those things willingly, gleefully, Nigeria, because they know that as they are stealing, they are keeping some for settlement and bribing. Mm. So we, I, I'm not really surprised. It's sad. Okay. And it calls to question where is the future of Nigeria? Where does the future lie? Well, there's also something on the, on, the, um, on the punch yes. this morning that's uh, talking about mm -hmm. AFRICOM. It says Buhari appeals to U.S. Yeah. over insecurity wants AFRICOM in uh, Nigeria. 
Um, do you, would you say that that might be, you know, an answer to some of our security challenges? It may not be an answer, but it, it, it could be one of the things we need to do, really. Nobody understands your country more than your own people. Okay? Nobody. Even if the U.S. forces come into Nigeria, they will still need to work with Nigerian army, I mean, with our soldiers, with our policemen. Okay? So external support is good. And I think, I, I, I remember asking government to seek external support. But external support has to be complementary. That cannot be the primary strategy. You must have your own security architecture, well-organized, well-funded. I talk about morale. Are we treating our security personnel well? Are they committed? The, the ease with which bandits overrun police stations, you, you, you wonder if there are no policemen in those police stations. You wonder if they don't have ammunition, okay? And like I said, you cannot rule out the connivance of people who want to score political points, all right? So if we do not put our hands in order, external support will make little or no impact. That's my view. Yeah. All right. So really about this African you know, issue, my question would be, is President Mohamed Buhari justified in his request? Because this is the United States, you know, Defense Command. And President Buhari is yeah. asking the U.S. to relocate this, you know, from Germany to Nigeria when it seems that we can't even get our own house in order. Are we really justified yeah. in that request? That call is well justified, okay? Like I said, if you become helpless, if you're at your wit's end, then you need support, okay? It's one thing for him to make that request. It's another thing for the U.S. government to assist to that request. So that request is well justified. Um, Senator Bola Saraki made the same call yesterday also, asking Bari to seek external support, because it's obvious that we cannot win the war against insurgents. The way things are, we cannot. Okay, so while we are waiting for external support, we need to be good to look at areas where we need to improve. Charity begins at home. Okay, what do we need to do? All those loopholes, if we need to recruit more people into the armed forces, let's do that. Let's create a special fund. Okay, maybe for now we should stop infrastructure development and focus on security development. If we need to import more ammunition, how come bandits and criminals have more sophisticated weapons than Nigerian army? Mm. Those are issues that we need to look at. Okay, so even if even if the U.S. government grants our request and decides to relocate that command to Nigeria, we need something. Okay, we we we, we need a very strong foundation. Like I said, it's it's, it's going to be complementary. It's not going to be the main thing that we have to depend on. So yes, that that call by President Boris is justified. I mean, somebody who is drowning has little yeah. or no choice, really. Okay. Nigeria yeah. is drowning security-wise. Yeah. And also, um, you know, there's also you know the U.S. Uh, Army commands in other countries that have not really you know changed or affected their security situations. Um, there's, um, I think, I read that there's a Turkish. Um, um, was it not? I think there's a Turkish military base also in Somalia, yeah, but that hasn't really changed much. Um, like you said, you know, if we don't start from yeah. home, there's no external support that will help our security situation. Um, it's very no. important that no. we, that we okay. bring in, um, you know, the factor, like you also mentioned, state governors, local government chairmen, and every yeah. other, you know, um, political yes. um, figurehead in the country needs to play a role at a time like this. Yeah. Um, but it's an ongoing yeah. conversation we yeah. hope that we all and the country survives this period. Uh, you know, yeah. to something yeah. better. We, 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 we need to demand greater transparency from state governors in terms of how they spend the security votes. I've never seen a country where you vote so much money for a governor for security and nobody knows how much. From what I learned, it's, it's, it's a budget that nobody can question. Who does that? How do you vote someone in to be your leader and you cannot question the way he's spending your money? And the same governor is the one that will shout, but well, it's not doing anything. The money that has been entrusted into your care, what have you done with it? I mean, you, 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 maybe it goes beyond buying a few vans and, and, and a few motorcycles for the police. You, 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 you make too much media noise about it, and people think that you, 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 you are working to improve security. No. All right. That doesn't even scratch the surface at all.
response. Dimala Kingbala, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks for starting our program for us and uh, we wish you a great day ahead. Yes, thanks. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. You too, sir. 28th of April. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. Uh, we're going into Today in History next. I'm going to be sharing a very sad incident that occurred in uh, 2012, uh, a car crash uh, that, of course, uh, cost the lives of three journalists here in Nigeria. But I'll be sharing some good news in India. Do stay with us.